Hello everyone, my name is Max Sophia Manish and I'm from Team Yuan and I'm the reporter of the problem number 10 suspended water. But the questions have been careful to take a light up to such as a start from this near the edge of the water that is aiming up hard, under certain conditions the object will start to speak one being suspended. So our job is investigating this phenomenon and susceptibility to the external perturbations. So the roadmap that we have, first we go to the initial observation that we have and the experimental setup, and then we go to the th different theories, for example, the theory of the momentum or the theory of the instabilities, and we examine the different characters, such as the angle, flow rate, and the hydrophobicity versus the angular velocity, the rotational speed. And then we uh, examine the effects of the external perturbation, and at the end we go to the conclusion part. So first of all, as you can see here, the, for the initial observation, we have a water jet, uh, a tube which provides a water jet, which is uh, aiming upward, and it, uh, and it causes a ball or a disc with different masses or volumes of the ball to rotate and spin and while being suspended in its place, as you can see here uh, for the initial observation in these videos. So, the, uh, first of all, why our ball is being suspended? This is the main reason of the question and the most important part of it. So as you can see here, we have the water jet, which is, uh, it has a mass and a velocity. So it has momentum, uh, we have a momentum of the water jet. And also we have some drops going out of the ball. So they have a mass and a velocity too. So they have the momentum too. So the force applied by the water jet to the ball or the disc is equal to the differences between these two uh, momentum, which is equal to the uh, minus of the mass of the ball itself. So here, uh, as, uh, as I've already mentioned, the water jet itself has a momentum. So if you imagine a small part of it, uh, for, uh, a small part of the water jet, uh, it has an efficient area and it has a displacement. So here, uh, the small part of the volume of this um, water jet, uh, uh, we can write it to A multiplied by V. Uh, dt. So the uh, momentum of the water jet itself, as of the output dimension, is uh, the mass of uh, the water multiplied by the uh, multiplied by the velocity. So instead of mass, we can write this. So the uh, momentum uh, in part of time is equal to the rho a d power of two. So we assume that the momentum of the water jet it is proportional with the uh, it is proportional with the uh, momentum of these uh, drops train out of the ball. So uh, we have a coefficient, we put a coefficient here, uh, and as I've already mentioned, the force applied by the water jet to the ball is equal to the differences between the moments of the drops trying out of the ball and the uh, water jet. So if we uh, minus these two um, momentum to each other and put this coefficient here, we can put it at a, a, a one coefficient in alpha, which itself is equal to the rho a v in power of two. So, uh, for a theoretical analysis, we know that the flow rate is equal to the A multiplied by V, and also in, instead of uh, rho AB2 in power of 2, as the augmentation is equal to the uh, forces applied to the system, instead of V, we can write this in uh, relation. So, the, in a steady state, we, uh, uh, Y, our force applied to the ball, uh, Y, water jet is equal to the mass of the ball, we can write uh, this is the force applied uh, to the ball. So where, uh, for uh, calculating the alpha itself, we uh, assume it as a, a linear uh, equation. So uh, by uh, solving this equation, we can uh, easily calculate the alpha itself, uh, uh, which is this relation. So experimentally, we examine this uh, theory too. As you can see, it, uh, it is uh, uh, easily observed that it is uh, like a line. So uh, this also is uh, something related and depends on the properties of the ball itself. So for example, when you are changing the mass of the ball or the radius of the ball itself, the alpha is changing to us. For example, changing the flow rate will not uh, cause to change uh, our uh, alpha, the coefficient that we have. So why we are observing this uh, phenomenon like this? Uh, why we have uh, these kinds of waves. First of all, uh, when we have the air moving upward of the water, as you can see here, these are the air and this is the water, based on the kelvin helmholtz instability, uh, the, these waves uh, become to uh, start to form. And uh, based on the two, due to the two different accelerations, first the centripetal force and the gravity that we have, based on the radiotherical instability that we have, these uh, waves uh, start to grow, and at the end, because of the other instabilities, they 
become to the legal mess at the end, and if they become predominant, they will become to the water cross. So as you can see here, this is the procedure that we have. First we have a sheet of water, and then the sheet is starts growing, and the ligaments becomes to happen, and the ligaments starts to grow, and because of the other instabilities, the water drops uh, will be formed. So here, um, these beads could be damped by the surface tension. Uh, if the uh, surface tension is more than the centrifugal force, uh, the beads uh, could just damp and not fall. But if the centrifugal force is larger than the surface tension itself, these waves start to grow and the wave, the fastest one becomes predominant and finally turns uh, into the ligaments itself. As you can see here, we have the pictures, the sheet of water here and the ligaments here. So, based on the properties of the ball, for example, the mass of the ball or the flooring that we have, we can see the different reactions of the ball. For example, the ligaments, uh, uh, we can observe the ligaments, and uh, that's because of the other instabilities they can change to the drops or the shear of water that uh, you can see here. So, we go through the experiment parts that we have. First of all, we change the hyperphobicity. For changing the hyperphobicity, we change the surface of the disc or ball that we have. For example, we cover it with oil or we uh, use a silver tape for it or we color it. And in that, uh, in that cases, the uh, contact angle, as you can see here, maybe uh, put a drop on the, uh, on the surface of the, of the disc or ball, the drop uh, will have an angle with the surface of the disc. So this contact angle will change maybe uh, when we are changing the uh, hydrophobicity or the surface of the disc. So by changing the hydrophobicity, as we are increasing the hydrophobicity angle, plus it will decrease. As you can see here, they have an inverse relation with each other because the water doesn't like to attach to the surface of the ball and, uh, uh, and uh, push it and uh, starts to rotate the ball. And uh, it just wanted to go out of the ball, so they have an inverse relation with each other. And we observe the same uh, reaction with the balls too. So, for example, for the hyperfluid one, we see more, uh, much more shear of water because uh, the water will have to attach to the surface itself. But for the hydrophobic one, uh, you can see, as you can see, uh, we cover this, wire, uh, uh, this ball with oil, we have uh, these uh, ligaments and uh, we have less shear of water. So here, the next parameter that we change is changing the flow rates of the voltage that we have versus the angle of velocity of the if or the ball that we and when we are changing the flow rate, the mass of the ball, is, uh, the ball of this is not changing. So the velocity of the water jet when it is uh, colliding with the ball or the disc uh, is the same. So it's not, uh, it doesn't matter for the ball or the disc uh, that uh, we, uh, what velocity it is uh, colliding uh, with the ball. It is the same. So the mass is not changing and based on uh, what we already mentioned in our theory, the flow rate is not uh, effective uh, and uh, as you can see here, they are somehow the same and it's like a lump. And also we see the same reaction when we experiment this with the ball too, uh, that's the, co uh, the collision, the velocity of the collision of the water jet and the ball is the same. And the weight of the ball um, is the same too, so the ball for uh, being stable uh, uh, will, uh, when you are uh, increasing the uh, water jet, the flow rate of the water jet, it will go and uh, be stable um, in a higher position. But the weight of the ball itself is not changing, so the uh, flow rate is not affected too. So as the question mentioned, we are uh, examining the um, effects of the external perturbations that we have. We apply a force by hand or by a key. Well, the most important part of this question is the reason of the stability of the ball of the disc in the x-axis. So, um, the in the x-axis are also stable because the force of the water jet will be cancelled by the drops uh, coming out of the ball, the momentum that the upper dimension they have. So when we are applying a force with the pin because it is stable, it has a stable equilibrium, the uh, momentum that the drops throwing out of the ball uh, will cancel the force that we are applying and they will push the ball uh, to, uh, back to where it was in the first place. So uh, it is one of the important uh, reasons for this question too. So uh, in the conclusion part, we can see that first of all we talk about the uh, instabilities, uh, different instabilities that we have. For example, the Kelvin Helmholtz that we uh, said that the reason for the uh, this sheet of water uh, to grow and the relative error because of the two different acceleration that we have, the centrifugal force and the gravity which causes these weights to grow and become to the ligament, and because of the other instabilities, the ligament becomes the water drops. 
And at the end, and the next step, we talk about the momentum, uh, momentum of the water jet and the drop straight out of the ball, and the force applied to the system, which is equal to the differences between these two momentums. And also, we have the coefficient named alpha, uh, which we assume means the, uh, the momentum of the water jet and then uh, drop straight out of the ball, they are proportional with each other. So, we have the coefficient named alpha, which was uh, related with the properties of the ball, but, for example, by changing the mass or the radius of the ball, they also uh, uh, will change. So uh, we go through the uh, experiences, for example, the effect of the hydrophobic the contact angle that we change, or the flow rate that we have that we see that it was not effective, and the external perturbation that we say that why our body is stable in the e ray axis and the x axis, that it was because of the uh, momentum of the drop straight out of the wall, which cancelled the force of the water jet, and the wave will be cancelled by the water jet force of the water jet too. So we have these charges, for example, for flow rate, and also we have this chart for the contact angle, which we see that uh, they have an inverse relation with each other because um, the water doesn't want to attach to the surface itself. So uh, it just wanted to uh, go out, uh, come out of the ball. So uh, with, uh, by uh, increasing the 